Welcome to Scoop Canada. In today's update, we're diving into the latest developments surrounding Trudeau's government, specifically focusing on the Arrive Scam scandal. The lack of transparency and accountability in this administration continues to raise eyebrows and questions. Trudeau officials are set to testify on Tuesday, but the burning questions remain how many more subcontractors have been referred to the RCMP. How will taxpayers get their money back? How deep does the liberal rot go? As you know, Trudeau's government has been mired in scandal after scandal, and the Arrive Scam issue is just the latest in a long line of controversies. Larry Brock's tweet hits the nail on the head, there's no transparency, no accountability, and Canadians are left footing the bill. The Arrive Scam scandal isn't just about a few bad apples, it's indicative of a systemic problem within the Liberal Party. This is a government that has repeatedly shown a blatant disregard for ethical governance and fiscal responsibility. When Trudeau first introduced the Arrive Can app, it was supposed to be a tool to help manage travel and border crossings during the pandemic. However, it quickly became apparent that the project was riddled with inefficiencies and questionable contracts. Millions of taxpayer dollars were funneled into a project that seemed to benefit a select few subcontractors, raising suspicions of cronyism and corruption. Trudeau's officials are now being called to testify, and it's high time we get some answers how many more subcontractors have been referred to the RCMP. The lack of transparency around these contracts is alarming. It's clear that the government has been hiding the full extent of the scandal from the public. This isn't just about mismanagement, it's about a deliberate attempt to obscure the truth from Canadians. The financial implications are staggering. How will taxpayers get their money back? Millions have been wasted on a flawed app, and there seems to be no clear plan to recoup these funds. Trudeau's government needs to be held accountable for this blatant misuse of public resources. It's not enough to just point fingers we need a concrete plan to ensure that such waste and mismanagement are not repeated. But perhaps the most pressing question is how deep does the liberal rot go? This isn't the first time Trudeau's administration has been caught in a scandal, and it likely won't be the last. From the SNC-Lavalin affair to the We Charity debacle, there's a clear pattern of corruption and unethical behavior. The Arrive Scam scandal is just the latest example of a government that prioritizes its own interests over those of the Canadian people. As we await the testimony of Trudeau's officials on Tuesday, we must demand transparency and accountability. Canadians deserve to know the full extent of the corruption within the Liberal Party. This isn't just about one app or a few bad contracts, it's about a government that has repeatedly failed to act in the best interests of its citizens. Trudeau's officials need to provide clear answers. How many more subcontractors are involved? What steps are being taken to recover the wasted taxpayer money? And most importantly, what measures are being put in place to prevent such scandals in the future? The time for excuses is over. Trudeau's government needs to come clean and take responsibility for its actions. The Arrive Scam scandal is a stark reminder of the need for transparency and accountability in our government. Canadians deserve better, and it's time for Trudeau to step up and deliver. As you know, yes, you heard it right. This is what's going on with the Arrive Can app saga and the Trudeau government. It's like something out of a bad movie. Dalian Enterprises a vendor hired by the federal government to work on the Trouble Derive Can app was awarded a contract from the Defense Department on the very same day its founder, David Yeo, started working there as a full-time public servant. Sounds fishy? Absolutely. Imagine this David Yeo tells a parliamentary committee that he began leading an ET project team as an employee of the Defense Department on September 19th, and on that same day, his company received a service contract worth $42,555.29. Even Yeo admits he should have fully separated himself from his company before taking the government job. That one's on me, he said. Really? It's a blatant conflict of interest, but he only realizes it in hindsight. The scandal doesn't stop there. When Yeo's employment was revealed, Treasury Board President Anita Anand and Defense Minister Bill Blair acted surprised and announced his suspension, along with suspending Dalian from obtaining further federal contract work. Annan claimed that there's a rule preventing such conflicts of interest, yet Yeo insists there was no conflict, even pledging to provide documents to back his claim. How much more convoluted can it get? Before we move further, discover our exclusive collection of mugs, hoodies, and a variety of daily accessories designed for Canada Conservative Party supporters. Show your pride with our Conservative-themed products at affordable prices. Enjoy free delivery across Canada.
The Auditor General's report on ArriveCan reveals that Dalian was paid $7.9 million for its work on the app, part of the $59.5 million project cost. Yeo, however, disputes this, saying his company only received $4.9 million. This whole situation is a clear example of the opaque procurement processes in the federal government, where staffing businesses bid on work and then subcontract the tasks, making it hard to trace where taxpayer money is actually going. In his testimony, Yeo, dressed in a gray suit with four medals, emphasized his long connection to the Canadian military. He argued that it's common for federal employees to have other jobs juggling government work during the day and entrepreneurial ventures at night. This might be true, but it doesn't excuse the glaring conflict of interest here. Yeo resigned from the public service, but the damage was already done. What's particularly troubling is how Dalian and its frequent partner, Coretix, have leveraged the procurement strategy for indigenous business to win millions in federal contracts. The program is designed to set aside some federal contract work specifically for indigenous businesses, but the indigenous partner must perform at least one third of the work. Despite this, there have been no after the fact audits to ensure compliance. This loophole has allowed Dalian and Coratix to amass over $400 million in federal payments over the past decade without proper scrutiny. When pressed by MPs about hiring indigenous workers, Yeo admitted he didn't know if any of Dalian's staff were indigenous. He even suggested that there aren't enough trained indigenous technical workers, a claim that rings hollow and highlights a lack of genuine investment in indigenous communities. Adding another layer to the scandal, Yeo's involvement in offshore tax havens came to light. He incorporated a company in the British Virgin Islands and another in Curaçao. When questioned, Yeo dismissed these as mere exercises in entrepreneurship, trying to downplay the seriousness of using tax havens. His responses to the committee were evasive and unconvincing, leaving many questions unanswered. This entire debacle exposes the Trudeau government's failure to maintain transparency and accountability. The handling of the ArriveCan app with its inflated costs and questionable contracts is a microcosm of broader issues within the federal procurement system. It's a system rife with loopholes and conflicts of interest where insiders benefit while taxpayers foot the bill. Also take a minute to visit our website. Sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. And do not forget to like share and subscribe to our channel for more updates. You know, it's a real mess. Trudeau's consultants have been pocketing taxpayer money and Canadians are left wondering what they're getting in return. Multiple police investigations into Trudeau's contractors highlight the depth of corruption and mismanagement that has taken root over the last nine years. The government contracting system under Trudeau is broken and corrupt, and it's high time we address these issues head on. Imagine this taxpayer money meant for public services and infrastructure lining the pockets of well-connected consultants and contractors instead. It's not just a matter of inefficiency, it's a betrayal of public trust. Canadians work hard, pay their taxes, and deserve to see that money used responsibly. Instead, they're witnessing a government that seems more interested in enriching its cronies than in serving its citizens. Canadians deserve better than this. They deserve a government that operates transparently, upholds ethical standards, and ensures that taxpayer money is spent wisely and fairly. Instead, under Trudeau, we see a government mired in scandal after scandal where conflicts of interest are brushed aside and accountability is a distant dream.